From the Dr. Ken Show, please help me welcome Ken Jong and his co-star Susie Nakamura. And then with them, we also have comedian Jenny Yang. She's going to be moderating the panel. <laughs> She's like, whatever. Whatever. There you go. Yeah. They're not scary, right? Okay, so, but why I had you here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you an episode of Dr. Ken, then we're gonna have a moderated conversation with Jenny and then open it up for some Q&A. But before we do that, I wanted to introduce council member Todd Gloria, who is here to make a very special presentation. Hey, Todd. Hello, Leanne. Uh, hello, everybody. How's everyone doing? I know you are here to see uh, Dr. Ken, not your council member, um, although I'm thrilled to be here and please vote soon. Um, I want to do two things this afternoon for just a, just a moment. First off is to thank the Pacific Arts Movement, Leanne Kim, who's an incredible uh, power in our community, making sure that this event happens over and over 16 years. That is a huge accomplishment. Um, it's difficult to put these film uh, festivals on, particularly in the age of Netflix and chill. So this is uh, very, very impressive that you can do this, Leanne, and you do it so t uh, such top quality. We're so proud to have this in our city. The other reason I wanted to be here is that, of course, we have a special guest with us today. Now, uh, you know, Ken Jong is an incredible talent. Am I right? <laughs> we fell in love as soon as they opened the trunk door in that car in Las Vegas. <laughs> Yeah, just let it sink in. Okay, and, and, and a multitude of performances since then. Uh, and I want to be here to present uh, this uh, proclamation uh, from the city of San Diego because you came to San Diego and we're deeply grateful uh, that you'd make the way down here uh, but, uh, at a time other than Comic-Con. We know they come during Comic-Con, but we want them to come back on other occasions. And you might say, well, why are you giving a proclamation uh, to the guy from The Hangover? Well, there's a multitude of reasons why. Some of you may not know he's a medical doctor, which is pretty awesome, right? Your parents were so proud, I know, I know. Uh, but I think importantly, some of you may know that I am the second person uh, of Pacific Islander history, hist uh, heritage elected to the city council in San Diego. The first was in 1963, the second, me, was in 2008. We represent 15% of this city's population, and yet we are not, we're too often not a part of the conversation, uh, certainly in political circles, often in popular media. And so I think we are all so excited that Dr. Ken is playing on ABC. I hope you all are watching it. The hands that are not up, you gotta watch. You gotta support our community to get our faces out there. And what I love, some of you know that in addition to being Filipino, I'm also Puerto Rican, Native American, and Dutch. And so the fact that you have a multicultural Asian family on television is also a big deal. So we wanna support that in the city. Our diversity is our strength. And for that reason, I'm sorry we're doing this at, to you at three o'clock in the afternoon, but we're proclaiming today to be Dr. Ken Jung Day in the city of San Diego. Yeah, we, how many hours do we have? Oh yeah, we have nine hours left for Dr. Uh, Ken Jong Day. Yeah, so it's, it's the Ken Jong night, right? Ken Jong night. Okay. Thank you so much, Council Member Gloria. All right. So, come on, let's just get to the show, right? So, let's go ahead and play the show. We're going to have a moderated conversation. Thank you all for coming. Enjoy. Hi. Okay, first of all, have you gotten used to watching yourself in front of a live audience? <laughs> while you're no, it's weird. It's uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I, I was, I was, I'm one of the uh, producers. Well, first of all, thank you for being here. Thank you, and everyone here, yeah. uh, Leanne and Todd. I, I'm, I'm very moved by the, this whole, uh, this whole day, and 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 I can't thank you enough for for inviting uh, me and Susie to be here, and also thank you to Jenny Yang for for moderating this. It, it for me, it was. Um, it, you know, as one of the, I'm not just an actor on the show, I'm also you know, basically one of the main executive producers, so um, to, to, your, to your question, you know, I, I've been in the edit bay editing this, you know, to, to actually to, to show it for you guys as well to get it out to the press, so, um, you know, I've been sick of seeing myself for like the <laughs> longest time, way before a crowd. <laughs> so, yeah. Even in my high school yearbook, I've been afraid, I've been hating to see my face. 
Yeah, what's your experience been like watching well, it, yourself? It's different when you're doing it, you know, and you're 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 living with the script for that week and performing it. So when I actually see it from you know as a viewer or as an audience member, it's it looks like a it looks like I'm I feel like I'm watching someone else. Yeah, you know, and that you know, like I didn't see the scenes that they shot at you know um, Julie's apartment and that kind of stuff. So it's very new to me, and I find myself enjoying it like an audience member. That's nice. Yeah, it is nice. Well, you know, my my sort of take on this panel that we're going to be doing is as a stand-up comedian and a writer, I have so many questions about the process, right? You know, sort of the evolution. Because, I mean, honestly... Um, <laughs> only only a handful of stand-up comics have a chance to really create their own TV show, right? Mm -hmm. There's a select few. And so, you know, I'm sure it's a learning process because this is your first time creating your own vehicle, right? Yes. Yeah, so um, I, that's what I'm curious about. And hopefully, do we? how many in the audience are writers or filmmakers? Okay, great. So hopefully, you know, for some of you, this kind of insider baseball ish kind of yes. questioning maybe you know it could be it could be helpful and interesting because i have a lot of questions but let's why don't we first talk about the episode that we just watched right okay number one can i just tell you when i saw the humbook i f i freaking freaked out <laughs> i was like i really hope they address that this is like a probably a woman's humbook and i'm like this is probably the first time that we've ever seen on network television like Korean cross-dressing, maybe? Yeah. You know, Call there's like so yeah, many firsts. Call it that. Yeah. There's so many firsts. Also, I want to address other firsts. Um, I, there's probably, then this episode is probably per minute the most words said of Korean over and over again in <laughs> network television. Like, Korean as a word is repeated. It's like, I don't know, it's just bring, bringing attention yeah, to I, the culture. Yeah, I mean, to me, it was really based on, um, I mean, I, I think as a, as, a, as a fledgling writer myself, and, and I, I want to, you, you write what you know, and you write your truth, and in real life, my real life wife is Vietnamese, and I'm Korean, so these are issues that, this was based on, on a real life, um, this is a, basically a real life issue between me and my wife, when my, I have twin daughters, they're eight years old, and they were, they were learning, like, when they were two, they could, they could count to 20 in Vietnamese, and I could, like, and I was like, and I, I was just totally, like, lazy in teaching them Korean <laughs> and I was just jealous like and, but I mean this was amplified I wasn't resentful of my wife but I was I was definitely like jealous that she was just so much better at it than me like you're just so good at doing this and like you're you know and, and it, it and, and it was great and then Tran uh, my real life wife would she would also overextend and she'd be like oh no let's let's go to Korea or like let's go to you know like the got a uh, she bought a Korean book you know it was really she was very in, in real life it was a a sweeter a sweeter happening than, than this but <laughs> but while we were while we were um in in, in when you prepare for uh, a, a, a tv show you have t eight to ten weeks of pre-production where it's just all the writers in a room just go over story ideas and yeah. you just i mean it's it's actually it's difficult and really hard and really fun to me in many ways it's really even more fun at, at, just as a producer because you're, you're you're creating this from scratch and we we just went around the room really and and, and but mostly me because i wanted to show in, in my head is it's more than a cultural um it was more than just a cultural show it was you know a cultural show reflecting cultural life it's my life it was reflecting my life and and like the multicultural ha house that i truly have and and, and that i've lived you know we've had for you know the last um uh, 12 years of, of marriage so so to me i wanted a show to reflect that and then one by one, the writers were like, let, let, hey, let's just make this a Thanksgiving episode. Maybe we can merge. I think it was actually my, our showrunner, the head writer, Mike Sykowitz, who said we could, we could merge your story about Korean and Vietnamese conflict and maybe into a Thanksgiving cultural conflict and really incorporate um, like Susie's real-life ethnicity as Japanese. And then actually what, what was beautiful about it and, and the genesis of it was you know, it became less my life and more... Susie's life where it was like, okay, this is, you know, maybe she, maybe her parents are not first generation, you know, like my, my parents being for, more first, well, I define myself as a second generation, I know there's different, different language, maybe if I was born in, I was born in Michigan in the United States, so mm -hmm. I think that some people say first generation or second generation, but I was the first one of my generation born in, in the United States, so I wanted to stay true to that, and then, and then talking to Susie and knowing that, like, there, there, there's layers and layers of generations, so I, I felt like there, wanted also 
like a little just subtle, but we didn't really want, wanted to make a big meal out of it. But yeah. showing that there's not only multicultural, but multi, multiple generations of, of Asians yeah. in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a subtle way. Yeah, because I feel like, I, mean, I grew up in Torrance, I don't know if any of you know about Torrance, but around a lot of Japanese Americans. And that was to me perceived as like, oh, they're like the most Americanized of all the Asians that I knew. But what's really, what's really interesting is that in this episode, it portrayed the different ways that sort of we retain or try to explore culture, right? Like, on the one hand, you're not, your character wasn't as really into the Koreanness, probably. Yeah, and I think But like he, your yeah. father's immigrant. Yes. And then yes. on your side, it's like, your your parents were sounded like the parents that I knew of the Japanese Americans. Yeah, right. No accent, and you know what I mean. And yeah, just like I like the difference between the second generation and third yes. generation, which you know, I, and but it, and not just in the Asian communities, but in any any community, mm -hmm. there's a there's a big jump between you know the 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 children of the immigrant families and then the, the those children, and I felt like we we displayed the typicalness of that mm -hmm. difference without you know, underlining it or having to explain it. And, and that's just the kind of the way I grew up. Yeah. You know, I, I, I knew a lot of the kids that I knew, their parents were immigrants from either like Mexico, Puerto Rico, the Philippines, you know, and I even had like Polish friends. And Where did you grow up? In Chicago. Oh, okay. A lot of Polish over there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Irish. <laughs> um, but you know, and so you went to their houses and there was always different food and they mm -hmm. spoke a different language and that kind of stuff. But a lot of people, you know, don't have that experience. But in my experience, that's typical. Yeah. And so I love that we got to sort of explore that a little bit. Uh, uh, you know, in this episode. And yeah, that was a, I was very hands on. Like some episodes, um, as of late, because just so busy wearing so many different hats, like sometimes I'm more in the editing or more in the producer. Well, this one was, was just like kind of like the pilot was. I was involved in every aspect of this and, and definitely in the rewriting of it because the whole, my mantra to the writers and, and any joke, I, we were just trying to go for jokes that haven't typically been done, even in my own stand up or even in my own, yeah. my own comedic life. We we're just trying to, I, I just kept telling everybody, like, mimic real life conversation and myself I would ask my wife like okay what are some real life conflicts and how how you know just real life how do we address culture I didn't you know I just did not want it to feel fake or phony and and, and using and also it, it evolved in something where uh, Ken is he's also the character of Ken is is just petty and I think he's just using this as he really is just insecure that Allison is doing a better job as a yeah. mother not not just culturally but just in general she was and it was I know it was actually it was a small rewrite of a line where I think Allison was supposed to apologize the kind of, kind of like the, the the Pat mutual apology you know yeah. and and I and I I remember saying like no I, I I don't think Allison did anything wrong in this episode so why should she even apologize mm -hmm. and then and Mike Sykowitz which was great. Mm -hmm. It was true, and it and then own up to it. Yeah, it was a great. I mean, this is how collaborative like uh, the the show is, and the right and how amazing these writers are. They were they were just like while we're filming it, um, you know, because in the script it was like, oh, there's a mutual apology we make up, and blah blah. Life goes on, yeah. but we wanted it to be like, um, and I think I ad lib something to the while we're in the writers, and well, maybe we just follow the cadence of an apology and not actually have her apologize. And then, and then, and then Mike used that and was like, okay, yeah, that's it. Well, it's yeah. the cadence. Oh no, I'm just apologizing to speed it up. So you can hurry up and like, and to me, that's great. I think that's what people do. That's what you do in marriage at times, you know, to resolve conflict. And I, these, these little glimpses that, that, um, that, that the writers provided, I, I really thought was, uh, I, I was really, you know, uh, it, it was, it was a wonderful experience. Yeah, and I mean, I think what it really showed to this episode is how, um, as whether you're Polish, Japanese, whatever, you know, you make up that tradition, and I think this is probably the first time that we really see that on a sitcom where, right, because I have, like, sticky rice for Thanksgiving. <laughs> right, right, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, that is our tradition, <laughs> right. sticky rice, right. and right. then we'll st put the sticky rice in the turkey. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the right. stuffing. Anyone else? No? That's no? Yeah, that's okay, right, right, right? Yeah. Chinese people? Okay. Yeah. Just saying. This yeah. is good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's tasty. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so I love the, the sort of using that as a competition because that stuff happens too. You know, I would, you know, using culture. I, if I was competing in my marriage, I would probably use my culture too. <laughs> Why not? Let's yeah. just throw that in there. Sometimes it's all we got. Yeah. And so, and I just want to ask you, because, you know, when, when it comes to a multicam, right, where it's sort of, there's a fourth wall, there's an audience, um, and, and it's 22 minutes, it's such a heightened reality of life, right? It's very compressed. So, you know, what, it, what has it been... Have you evolved in how you decide what are the sort of jokes or takes that you keep 
you know, have you kind of, what, you know, what is your sort of guideline or rubric for thinking about how you edit that? I mean, it's funny that you say that. I, I really just, I, I'm new at multicam myself, so my whole life has been, my whole career has been like more movies and community with single camera for, for like uh, six years. And and so for me, it's been, I, I, I've been learning as I go along, but in, my attitude was to, you know, funny is funny, and, and you want to, although I do have to, I'm learning new parameters, and I'm still learning, to be honest. I, I don't, you know, I, I don't think I fully have gotten it down in terms of the multi-camera, but the showrunner, Mike Sykowitz, has, he's been on every great show since Friends. You know, he was one of the main writers of, the original writers of Friends. So so he really knows that landscape so well, and we become very, very close collaborators. So he's helped kind of take my vision that is mostly single camera and, and, and cinematic, and he, he's taken it into this world. So it's been, it's, it's definitely been a partnership in, in that way. But, it, and, and, and we're both benefiting a lot. Obviously, I benefit so much from his wisdom and his, his knowledge, but he benefits from me because it's a bit of, of a fresh take on things, and I'm always looking to do something new and, and do something, just a different take. Even for an Asian American show, just wanted to make it, you know, I, I just want, I, I'm just trying to do something as, as, as um, you know, if it's not funny, it would want it to be different, you know, and that, yeah. and that, that mentality, um, I, which really I got from community, I was very influenced on that, where I, honestly community was a multicultural show that didn't make a big deal out of it. I mean, no one thinks about that, but uh, at its height in the second and third year, there were more minorities on that show in the main cast than there were Caucasian. So you had Danny Pudi, Yvette Nicole Brown, Donald, Glo Donald Glover, you had like, four, and myself, so there were four out of like six or seven that were in the main cast. And so, and I loved how the creator and showrunner Dan Harmon had really not made a big deal and so I was very influenced by by community be honest to in, in doing the show in, indirectly yeah, yeah. And, and it's so, involved a little bit since we started because yeah. when you write a pilot you it hasn't been cast yet you, yes. you've created these characters from nothing and yeah. then you know and then all of a sudden you do it and for the actors as well you know we're we've just been introduced to these yeah. to the characters we're playing but once the writers meet the actors and they start to see what we can do and who our characters are and when the characters become more clear, then they can start writing joke, character jokes as opposed to joke jokes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, with like a setup and a payoff. The, a character can say something and, you know, hopefully the audience knows this person well enough to understand, you know, mm -hmm. where it's coming from or what the motivation is and, and then you can get the laughs from the characters as well. But our ultimate gauge really is the audience, the fact that we do it in front of a live audience. Um, you can write whatever you want on the page, but until you do it in front of someone, that's the ultimate, you know, um, litmus test of whether it's working or not working. And we have such an amazing uh, group of writers that are on the floor with us while we're shooting so they can tweak things and change things um, and ba truly based on what the audience is doing at that moment. And mm -hmm. it's, it's a luxury, and that's the great thing about Multicam yeah. is you have that audience there. I mean, you know from community, when you shoot single camera, it's you're just shooting in front of the crew, and then it's it a goes. Vacuum, in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's but sometimes it's bad because you don't know if the jokes are landing or not. And then if you're in post on an, on a single camera show, if you're doing, um, and if that joke's not landing in the edit bay, then you're kind of freaked. You don't know. At least you know in a multi camera whether that joke is landing. That joke has been vetted totally. so many times. So in many ways, it's editing itself while while we're producing it. Like like we film on a Tuesday, so Monday and like we've had three full days of rehearsal. This one episode that we're doing right now, and and we're just going over the jokes. Are the jokes landing? Are they true to the characters? And it's a, and every day changes like significantly these scripts. Yeah. And then and Monday and even while we're shooting it on Monday, we'll do some pre-shoots, and that's going to change because I think that we'll haven't we haven't gotten it right. And then on Tuesday on the audience, it will, hopefully we've gotten it right, but a lot of times we don't, and then we'll be changing on the spot. And we and we know that the script is like a newspaper; mm -hmm. uh, it just changes uh, from from day to day. And yeah. that's kind of the and the, what to Susie's point about in terms of and to answer your question in terms of like in, in the in the the, the eight week pre-production. process, process we interviewed every actor every actor came in the writers room or we had lunch with all the actors and 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 got to know them better and and and, and I don't know if, if, if all the actors knew this we devoted a, a single day in our first week we devoted a single day to Allison a single day to to Albert's character a single day like 10 hours just discussing oh, just okay. nothing but that character yeah. and 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 addressing anything from the pilot that we thought didn't work right. or worked and so we were very um, like we were very like okay there's stuff in this pilot that didn't work at all, how do we improve that? Even if we got, and I, I think that's to, um, to Psychowitz's credit, and I really, and I, and I subscribe to that too. We weren't, 
we weren't just happy getting a series on the air. We wanted to make it good. We wanted to make it better. And, and we knew that the pilot, in my opinion, you know, I helped write it, so I'm blaming myself. So it had its problems, and it wasn't great. And then, you have, like you said, you're really writing in a vacuum, and you have no leverage while you're writing a pilot. You're really writing it. It's like an industrial video. You're writing it to sell something. And yeah. then, so it's a, it's a completely different process of a pilot than when you're doing a series episode when then you really get to, this is what I want the show is about, you know, and, yeah. then, and then talking to Susie and getting spending time with all the actors. And, and then it's even great now. Now that now when, when we started filming the show, they were like, oh, this is what this is what like Ken doesn't do very well. Like, we, maybe we avoid those. Yeah. How, you know, this is this is what Ken does well. We'll write to that. This is what Albert does really well. We'll write to that. What does Ken do well and doesn't do? Oh, I, I do a, whole, a lot of things not well. <laughs> they cover me up real nice, you know, but <laughs> they cover up all my flaws. There are many as an actor. But um, but but really, they they what's great now, actually, as the shows are airing, we're able to watch the shows and see, oh, this episode worked or this episode could have been better in some yeah. spots so it's, it's really great to have that continuous feedback and to be in production while the show is airing yeah. that's been actually really invaluable to actually the editing of this episode I'm edit, you know we edited it this week and and even I was on hiatus last week and I spent my whole hiatus helping to cut I, I was really down to the second I was really in yeah. the certain episodes that I really want 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 to make a statement about I, you know if I have time I'll do that yeah, yeah. And by the way, I forgot to congratulate you on getting the back nine ordered for oh, thank the you. full season, well, thank right? You. So well, to the fans, right? thank you guys. I mean, that, on a, and, 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 and that's another thing I forgot yeah. to set up is that, I mean, the, all the headlines essentially name Dr. Ken as the most successful sitcom of the season or the comedy of the season. Well, that's, that's out of our control. That's really the fans. Yeah, I no, mean, so honestly, we only can crank out product, guys. but honestly, that that is just to the amazing, goodwill of the though. fans watching we're the show. Stoked. Believe no, me, we're you know, that's amazing. Stoked. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, when we announced that we got the back nine, it was, it, yeah. yeah, we did not, I mean, you, you, as an actor, and, and Susie and I, we've been doing this for a while, you, you, you know that, that, that the chances of getting a full season is so remote. People have yeah. no, the chances of getting a pilot made uh, is so It's remote. like the lottery. It's, it's like, the, like lottery. the lottery. Just to even get a script to pilot <laughs> is like the lottery. Pilot to series is yeah. even more of a lottery, and then I would say like 80 to 90% of freshman shows don't get picked up. So to get a full season, yeah. or, or even don't get a full season, 89% of the shows, you know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm a glass, and, and that, in terms of that, in terms of like the public, I'm a glass half full guy, where I'm just so grateful to the fans, and you know, really watching. That actually motivates me right now at this point in my career. I just wanna, I just wanna keep getting better and better at what I do, and, yeah. and, and, and to really please the, the, the audience that, that really got me here, you know. Yeah. I have a question for Susie. Um, you're a, well, number one, you are a longtime improviser, comedic improviser from Second City in Chicago, which anyone is familiar, which is awesome. A great inspiration for me, you know? And, and you've been acting in so many things, commercials and different parts. And as an Asian American woman, you know, you, I'm sure there's certain opportunities and limitations, right, to the kind of acts and uh, roles that you can play. And so I wonder now for, the first time, I'm assuming, I mean, you have played ensemble sort of, you know, uh, starring roles, yeah. but for the first time as sort of one of the two, <laughs> you know what I mean? How has it felt for you as an actor to be in this type of a show? Well, uh, honestly, I didn't spend that much time thinking about it, yeah. only because as an actor, you just go from job to job to job to job and you know, you don't have that much of a choice in what you play because you just, you need to work. And so, um, you know, I, this, was a, this was an opportunity to work with Ken, which I wanted to do. But, you know, when I got it, I was like, great, good, I can pay my rent or whatever, <laughs> you know. And you don't think about it. And then I started doing interviews and they were saying, like, so what's it like to be a TV mom in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the footsteps of all these other TV moms? And I didn't really think about it. Um, I don't know if I can think about it too much because I don't want to get too, too into my head because I feel like right now I'm coming from a place of like, I, I feel like I know Allison and I, you know, I, I love her, like I've grown to love her and the relationship that she has with Ken. And so that's what I'm kind of focusing on, but I don't like to put it in the context of like the history of television moms or moms on television because I feel like we're, we're telling a different kind of story yeah. right now. 
And it's funny, it while, from a different place. while you're doing it, you want to leave that for history to judge. We're, we're, we're actually just trying to, to do the now. And so yeah. it's, it's hard enough to just kind of do what we're doing right now. So you really can't, fo it, it, it's like you just don't have time in your mind grapes to even focus on, <laughs> you know, to focus on that. But, um, but I do think uh, when you're talking to your point about the back nine, I, I do think um, the success of Dr. Ken w it was also due to Fresh Off the Boat. I mean, I think that show is the gold standard of, you know, of Asian yeah, yeah. sitcoms right now. I mean, they really are. They set the bar yeah. so hard. Hi, and and I just I just you know I really just I've just grown to love everybody on that show on and off camera and even the producers and and you know I've gotten some of their advice too off the record you know yeah. and they've been so and I think fresh off the boat is is um, in many ways a reason why we're, we're here right now so I, I really uh, yeah. that show is just um, uh, what that show has done and I think it will not only for our show but it will continue I, I guarantee you um, there are other networks and, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure other networks are going to want to do their fresh off the boat right now yeah. because that is doing so well and mm -hmm. it's really impacting us and I'm very proud to say like Albert um, next week is um, well he's already a recurring character on Fresh Off the Boat he's coming back going back next week to film he's filming another Fresh Off the Boat crossover. episode crossover so crossover yeah, yeah that's already been announced in Entertainment <laughs> Weekly and then and then so we're doing a little bit of a swap and Ian Chen who plays one yes. of the sons yeah is also going to he's coming to, to Dr. Ken so Amazing. it's just it's really cool and you know it's just the, the, the genuine love that behind the scenes uh you know, our shows have for each other. And, and, and how wonderful you know. that both shows are on the same network. Yeah, yeah. It, what ABC has done is What's happening, ABC? What's happening? What's happening? Well, what ABC is doing, I mean, with Quantico, too, you have three shows Quantico. with Asian leads, and, 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 and they're generating numbers. And, and to me, that's a testament to ABC. It's the American broadcasting company. It's America, which is minorities. And, and what they really, and you talk about how to get away with murder, scandal. Yeah. You're, t you're talking about, like, really giving um, minority actors. We, I feel like ABC, we we have the biggest chance to, to succeed, and I'm so grateful. So I'd like, speaking of Fresh Off the Boat, I, I, I would love to identify something that I've noticed is, I don't really see in other shows, is the fact that there are jokes that are made at the expense of white people. What? <laughs> I mean, I don't say that as a bad thing. <laughs> I just find it really interesting that there's actually an Asian American show that, you know, has a little bit of an edge on yeah. that yeah. comedy, you know? Because yeah. honestly, I mean, this just as a stand-up comic who, you know, I, as an Asian American woman on stage for stand-up comedy, I'm already like weird to people. They're not used to seeing me. And then most people's understanding of what it means to be ethnic and on stage is maybe, you know, a lot of black, you know, a lot of history of black humor and black comedy, Latino maybe, you know, and then Asians what? What's Asian American humor, right? And so for me, like like in, in this show, for, for even the fact that Dave Foley is like the foil, <laughs> Oh, right? Yeah. It's like white dude foil. <laughs> you know, and just ending with that final tag of like when the white man invades. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Where do you hear that? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, not, I'm just saying, but it's an element, and even in Fresh Off the Boat, this is not about Fresh Off the Boat, but like the way that Grandma Huang, right, yes, she speaks yeah. in, in Chinese, yeah, yeah, and yeah. she's always saying the illest yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. She's always like, saying like the most like yeah. fucked up thing about white people. It's like, and it's like, it cracks me up because honestly, and this is totally just me speaking for myself, that shit's real, okay? <laughs> that shit's real. I'm so sorry, yeah. white people. Sometimes our people will say some stuff. <laughs> Out of prejudice, this is what I'm saying. Right, I know, we all do. Yeah, yeah. But I just, to me, it's just almost like so different that I get to see that reflected, you know, on network television. Yeah, you you're know? right. Growing up, I never had like, oh, that because I think growing up, um, African American, let's say in the '70s, right? You, you, you had either you had Good Times, you had Jeffersons, yeah. you might have had different different strokes, maybe or something like that. But you don't really, you know, um, I'm 46, so as an Asian American, like I don't remember like having like, oh, okay, you know, I don't. You're right. There wasn't anything I, I, I referenced, you know, that was distinctly Asian American. And now, you know, you know, Asian American kids will have two shows, you know, and yeah. and, and I, I know there will be more. I know there will be more. There, it's just it's just have you just you can feel it, you know, behind the scenes. You can just feel it. Yeah. 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 yeah so it just to me, it just feels like there's just um, a little more, a little bit more of a freeness to the expression. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Of yeah. how we think and how we might feel, and and just you know. seeing it informs the audience this has been missing, even Perhaps. though they didn't know it was missing <laughs> before they saw it. 
Just a small point, yeah. And so um, let's just get into real quick, and before we go to Q&A, what does your writer's room look like? How did you kind of arrive at the number and the, t and the sort right. of makeup of the writer's room and, and a little bit more about the, the process for how you guys get to it? I mean, to me, it was really just interviewing, honestly, the best writers we could possibly find. And, and also, to me, uh, just as, you know, as a writer and producer myself, I, I, I wanted to be, for me, I wanted to have as much uh, community people as much, because they knew my, my voice ah, and my style. So, so, so to me, it, it was trying to, and, and we were very blessed where, and, 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 old, and friends of mine who are writers that I, you know, that know my voice, you know, in general. And so we were very lucky to have like, um, uh, like two writers who I've worked with on community for many years. And that was really important to me because I, I also think they also get the multicultural aspects of it that yeah. is more silent on community but I wanted that kind of tone yeah. being being purveyed and, I, and then um, and I had uh, one of my my own writing partner who I work with all the time Mike O'Connell you know he had he was instrumental in writing the pilot with me and so he knows the voice and he knows uh, I've known him for 20 years and he, he knows everything about me you know good and bad so we wanted something like to really to reflect it, it was even deeper than than culture I and mean, we do have an a Asian American writer Nicole Sun who actually is writing the current episode that we're writing that we're filming right now it's uh, Molly's boyfriend episode which is like and she's she's a younger writer and, and really identifies with Molly and I think she writes I, th I feel the best Molly episode that we that we have so far and so so to me it was really getting the right tone uh, and also I, I, um, you know I, I'm there all the time like after we do rehearsals and like even like Friday all nights. The all are the you time. sleeping, Ken? No, all I'm not. He does no, not sleep. I mean, are you applying your med school I, I am, study habits I mean, to... He I mean, is. He is. I mean, well, I never He's slept like, in med school. You know, so right? I never slept, you know. <laughs> it, it was one of those things that to me it had to be done just right. And so you kind of have to be... Uh, a bit of a control freak about it because it, you you just have to because if it's, it's my name on it then I gotta like he I feels just gotta responsible do yeah. for n not just like the content of the show and the people who work on it he feels responsible like to provide jobs for the yeah 150 or yeah yeah it's a different like, it's a different pressure yeah, level of pressure, pressure. It's insane. It's yeah when insane. I was on Community or doing the Hangover movies it was only I only had responsibility myself and I, I didn't create those characters I didn't produce I didn't write them and so it was it, it was it was one thing and so my my mentality just keep getting jobs and this one you know like I, right now I don't have anything else on the back burner this is all so all consuming yeah. that I can't possibly have anything else on the back burner so I'm I'm just like like last night we like like yesterday, early yesterday morning, I was doing like a promo thing for the show, and then and then uh, then have full rehearsal, and so yeah, I was up at six a.m. like getting just filming something outside of the show for, but but within mind for the show, and then doing rehearsal all day, then had to uh, present it to the network a full like rehearsal in front of the ABC network. They gave us their feedback, what they liked, what they didn't, and then um, and then we live tweeted, and then we did some we things. We did like a, a photo shoot. Photo like shoot, yeah, that thing. Susie and I did a and photo shoot. And Sony, do the live tweet. On your Twitter, like homies then, on his and then, Twitter. And then, then we, you know what we did a live tweet, and then, <laughs> yeah, and then, and then after that, I was at the writer's room till like about about 11 or midnight last night. I wrote and perform in two minute BuzzFeed videos and I was already freaking out. <laughs> so I can't even imagine, and I'm, and I'm not providing the salaries for BuzzFeed people, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, yeah, it's a different thing when you're, and I do feel responsible for, you know, the 200 people cast and crew that work on our show. So it's a bit, you know, you, you really just want to work even extra hard, uh, hard, hard for them too. Any other sort of thoughts before we go to Q and A? No, I just want to thank you. In the city of San Diego, I did not expect, you know, to. <laughs> this is just beyond. Give yourselves like, a round of applause. I don't even know what to yeah. say. Yeah. I did not expect that at all, and and yeah. I don't know. I'm very. On behalf of Dr. Ken, we're all very moved, and and I'm so so grateful for Susie to be here, and and then and Chris and Albert says, yeah. you know, their hellos. Albert's probably at some, you know, he's I don't know. He's probably at Soho House. He's right probably now. at the Soho. He's probably partying. I wouldn't say it's a Playboy Mansion <laughs> now because they don't show nudes, but he's probably there. Well, can I just say that as a as a stand-up comic, an Asian American female stand-up comic. Um, it is so meaningful for me to be able to moderate this panel because, you know, regardless of, because here's the thing, as a creator, right, you know, I'm trying to figure my shit out all the damn time. You know, I'm trying to come up, I'm trying to learn my craft. And to see you in the spotlight doing that process in front of us, you know, it's very humbling, you know, just to kind of really imagine myself 
if someday I could be in your position or even anywhere near what that would be like, you know? And so I just think it's, it's, it's an honor for me. It's beautiful to be able to share this. It's an honor to be here with yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's super it's, dope. Like, no matter what, like, I mean, we are at, at a very special moment for Asian Americans in, absolutely, in media yes, right now, yes, right? Abs- it's just, absolutely. that's the realness. And we, I think it's as good. we don't it's know where better. it's going to go. Yeah. We're all just trying to improve, yeah. right? And so yeah. I really appreciate your sort of honesty around... Oh, no. Trying Likewise. to improve and, and kind of, you know, making the show better. So oh, Thank you. Yeah, so I just want to thank, thank Dr. Ken for that. Oh, no, thank you so much. And, you. and Susie. So, yeah, I'm going to call out. Raise your hand. We are not. We only have a few minutes, so if you could just make a quick... Hi. Um, quick my, questions. Uh, yeah, quick question. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm a filmmaker from Korea, um, and uh, uh, thanks for the panel. I think uh, comedians are the best actors, by the way. Uh, I do, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, you see a lot of Korean directors these days, like Bong Joon-ho, working with uh, actors from Hollywood. My company, we recently produced uh, a web drama with uh, Big Bang, uh, Top from Big Bang, K-pop band, and Ueno Juri, Japanese actress. So I was kind of wondering if, uh, can, if you'd be interested uh, any time okay. working with a you know, co- Korean filmmaker for a Korean film, whether it be a you know, drama or... You know, Commercial. Wow. Okay. So that's oh, no, a it's different. Funny. Kind like of I, me and my writing partner actually did write something where it's just it was just a treatment right now. Like uh, it was it was kind of it's I don't want to give away too much because we're still it was just something. Um, but it was something set in Korea and and something it was. Ken just, goes K-pop. It, it, it was it was just no it was it was please, actually a little please, bit please, more. Please. Let's see. It was this. a little bit more understated, more dramatic about like me just kind of kind of like it's almost like it's kind of similar to Dr. Ken where where it's just more like the kind of like. The guy maybe who's growing up in America who's just kind of like the ugly American and maybe <laughs> not like – and thinking of himself as American and then he goes to Korea and realizes where, you know, he really from. He's more of a – you know, that kind of – he's kind of a kind of a loser here in L.A. And then and then he's just <laughs> – but he goes to Korea really knows – what, what he's about. I so, love that. So, no, no, I, I so you're open w- to it. Oh, yeah. I've, yeah. I've been, I, I, when I was in Korea a few years ago, um, I, I, was, I was visiting with a lot of production companies trying to, trying to, I would love to do a movie in Korea. This question is for the doctor. I have a rash. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try hydrocodes on 1%. If that doesn't work, I'd go for Lamis LAT. That's probably a fungus. <laughs> yes. You. Better uh, than WebMD. Here we go. Good questions, guys. Good questions. <laughs> The first time I discovered you, you were at the Apollo, which is a difficult uh, stage. And, and the whole hip-hop thing, I was really surprised to see coming from a doctor comic. Uh, where, did, where did you land on that, that whole hip-hop thing? I don't thing? know. It was something like my father, you know, it's, it's, it, it, my father actually is a retired economics professor at an all-African-American um, college in, in Greensboro, North Carolina. So, what? yeah, it, it's a whole thing. We're like, learning like, so much it, today. How do like, we my, yeah, this? My, this is my, amazing. My dad was such a, my dad is, and he, he's, it, what a he, he, is, he is very much like, he's like a stand-up, I, actually, he made me take a cl- uh, like an economics class with him when I was a kid, and and he would actually work the room like a comic from the Apollo. I probably got – he was literally doing crowd work and because my dad had a black Cadillac that he would drive to work. I swear to God. He would what? drive to work. And then he was like, Dr. John, why do you have a black Cadillac? He goes, don't you know black is beautiful? I mean, he would say all these things. <laughs> He's funnier than me. I probably got it from my dad. Jenny, amazing. this is amazing. I know that I'm Can learning. I, this is the first we're time We're getting intimate. Heard. Ken Jeong, we're getting intimate. I want to hang out with your dad. I was a poli sign nerd. I used to work in politics. I want to hang out with him. Oh my when, God. We d- when we screen the East Coast feed of the episodes, his dad calls. Yeah, my dad every- calls after it's every. It's the greatest thing oh, he he's calls. Like, yeah, he's so sweet, yeah. But that's, I, I love that question because I do get your, you still do the hip hop hands sometimes. Just, you know. I see it. I grew up with hip hop. Okay, next. Who's the next person? Thank you for that question. Is there any truth to the rumor, Ken, that um, Dave Foley was responsible for Betty White hitting on you on the <gasps> set of Hot in Cleveland? What? <laughs> Betty White We're hitting on me? Let's We're start going that rumor deep. right now. I don't That's <laughs> deep. <laughs> it's so funny. You were, to your point, actually, one of the one of the main reasons why I wanted to work with Dave Foley because uh, I worked with Dave Foley and Albert Tsai on a on a live episode of Hot in Cleveland on on uh, last year, and it was. One of my favorite things ever was in front of an audience and was taped and filmed live and broadcast live to everybody. And I got to hang out with, with, I've already done a movie with Dave Foley and we were already friends, but I really got to know him a lot better. And I was like, I got to work with him again. And then I I saw Albert on Trophy Wife. I was a huge fan, but I got to work with him on this Hot in Cleveland episode. And it was because of Hot in Cleveland. I 
I booked a third of the cast of, uh, of Dr. Ken and, um, and no comment about hitting on Betty White. <laughs> yeah. how, do your how does your family feel? Because I went to film school and my family was all against it because it wasn't a lawyer or a doctor. You're a doctor, but you're going backwards, going, doing it in front of the camera. So I'm wondering how your family ex you know, appreciates that. And that's also for Susie. Oh, Susie, Sansei, fight the power. What's up? What's up, brother? Uh, Susie, wow. We just I, you know what? I, I thought my parents were against it for many years, but the truth is they just they're just they were just worried about me. They were worried how am I, how am I going to retire? How am I going to you know yeah. ha have health insurance and that kind of stuff? But honestly, they did support whatever I wanted to do. They just wanted to make they didn't want to worry about me. My backup is retail, though. I, his backup hey. is a medical doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so like he has a whatever show backup. off. Show off. But I mean, as long as you can like feed yourself and you know and behave, ex society, behave well in a society, I think mo most most parents would be cool about it. They don't yeah. want to stop you. They're just they're just worried about you, which yeah. is understandable. Yeah. To Susie's point, my parents were just petrified because they didn't know. They, my dad was always like, I know, and my mom too was. I know you have the talent, but I don't know if you could succeed in it because it's not a it's not a fair business. It's a bit, and, and also you're a minority actor. You're not gonna. Who knows the opportunities you're gonna have? There's not gonna be many. Mm -hmm. But I do remember, like when my wife, um, after I filmed Knocked Up. My, long story short, my wife encouraged me to do this full time and she's a doctor and she's been very supportive if it wasn't for Tran I wouldn't be here right now and she it's true and and then when my my dad found out well, when we told my parents I was just like well what is what does Tran say well Tran insisted that I you know that I do this full time and my dad was like I, you, you got to have the support of your family when you make an important decision like this Tran is now your family so you have my support so that's that's where because of the support of my of Tran really it, it really just galvanized my career a little bit of personal question. Um, Capricorn. Capricorn. <laughs> Virgo, okay. Um, I mean, Virgo. <laughs> uh, to me, uh, the, the gentleman just uh, suggested going backwards, sort of, from medicine to acting. And to me, it's almost the opposite. You know, I, uh, I view you as uh, a hero in a way. I, we were both born in the Midwest, and you took what your you're supposed to be given, I guess, and turn it into something personal and something big. And to me, you're a hero, and I just wanted to know if, uh, if you got that in others, or is it just me? I, you know. Well, you're too kind. Uh, you're, well, you're, you're very, you know, I love you. Um, <laughs> I have to, I, you know, I, I, I mean, to me, I, I just think of myself as very, very lucky, and I, 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 I think I'm, I'm blessed with the, 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 the best wife and the best family in the world, and, and also the best cast. It, it takes a village, and, and it's just, it's so, it's so hard, it's so stressful, and, and it's just, you just got, I, I'm just very, very lucky, and I, I do along the way, in, in entertainment at least, I always try to tell myself, even with Dr. Ken, I always just try to, you know what, we, we, we did... Oh wow, we got the. I remember after we did the pilot, and it was before we found out about the ratings. I was just like, oh, well, you know what? No one can take away. I did the pilot. No one can take that. I mean, I'm always the glass half full guy, even if it all ended right now. Like, you know what? No one can take like the. No and one can take away that we sh with that. No one can take away the, the Thanksgiving day. You know, Thanksgiving up that we share with. You. I mean, so uh, to me, I'm just trying to. Um, Kind of celebrate the present as much as as much as possible, rather than 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 think too much about it. Because um, you know, I'm I'm just kind of in the thick of it right now. But I but thank you for your kind words, and it just motivates me to work even harder and be even better. Thank you. So yes, thank you, th everyone. Let's please thank San Diego Asian Film Festival, Ken yeah, Jones, Susan Nakamura. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you guys.